Hi everyone, it's Frank Rotz. Uh, I just figured I'd start doing, since there's so much stuff to start talking about fishing, that uh, I would try to maybe throw out something like a tip of the day every other day or so, depending on how much time I have, uh, to just explain some things, all the finer nuances that uh, involve the research and the fine tuning that, uh, that I do to have successful fishing when I am on the water because I'm not a professional fisherman I'm not making my living on the water so a lot of the preparation things I do here at this desk or in other areas uh, kind of culminates to the channel that I'm doing and since I've gotten a couple subscribers who I've been communicating with who are kind of liking the stuff I figured I'd break stuff down so and maybe get more videos out there and uh, break down some new information that way so today's tip of the day is big question. Do I fish a full grip rod or do I fish a split grip rod? And I'll start with the traditional full grip first because that's what most people are familiar with. So the rod that I have here is a G Loomis crankbait series. It is a moderate, deep flex, medium heavy. It's a composite blend. I believe this rod sells for $2.95 now. Um, and maybe a little spoiler alert, I think I'll do a Loomis video later on specifically about why you should fish G Loomis or maybe try out one out at least. Um, but this is the traditional full grip we're familiar with. You've got your cork here, you've got your traditional Fuji reel seat with this little slight open part here, which does allow for some contact on the blank and just your traditional uh, reel seat like this. So I guess the reel seat will factor in with the handle when we talk about this. Uh, this has been around, this standard design's probably been around for, geez, I don't know, 30 years. You know, probably. Um, and, and this reel seat in particular is the predominant one that has been used on named Ren rods. They, I think they use the same one on like the St. Croix, the Triumphs, the Premiers, uh, the Abbots. Um, it is a very universal reel seat. If you want to order a rod and have a reel that will fit on there, it's good. Um, it's durable, it's graphite, it's lightweight, it's sensitive, it doesn't mark up all that much. Um, allows for good vibration transmission from the blank through here, through your real seat. Um, and it's relatively comfortable. Um, but you pair this up with a cork handle and we'll start with the pluses. What would the advantage be to this? Um, to me, it's just really simple. Um, if I'm fishing spinner baits, crank baits early in the season or late in the season I'm using more of a vegetation is down and I'm hitting a lot more open type target areas I'm not working vegetation so using a rod like this if I'm wearing a coat or something like that what I'm able to do is after I make my cast I'm able to tuck this here, whether I've got a light jacket on, a coat, a sweatshirt, what have you. And uh, regardless if I'm layering or not, whatever I'm wearing, a rain suit or what have you, I can tuck this underneath here. And, uh, well, actually I'm going to be doing it from, well, either way I do both. Um, well, mostly I think I do it this way. So I can keep this tucked underneath here after I make my cast and I can reel. Sorry about that, I can bait cast either way. And I can reel, and I can keep this here, and it's a real clear ad comfort advantage because I'm able to take some of the weight of the rod off um, because I'm using a side sweep casting motion on a, on a crankbait. I'm using a, let me see if I can do this, I'm using a side sweep motion. So I'm not hitting straight up, I'm um, doing it to the side, and this is able to just provide a real comfortable motion for that for a side sweep cast. Um, again, casting straight out and tucking it in. Um, or if you do more vertical type hops, um, you can see if you like to vertical hop why this would be an advantage. But for overall plastic and jigging, I would recommend the split grip and I'll show you later on why. So that's why this has been around a long time and, it, and it's, it's fairly standard, but not quite so common anymore. I see that the full grip is making a comeback a little bit as something newer in other rods. But you don't have to use a G Loomis crankbait rod, use a crankbait rod. That would be for any jig and worm rod, spinnerbait frog, anything. That's why you may be able to want to consider using that full handle. So the next rod I'm going to show is on the other end of the money spectrum. It's not going to cost you 285 bucks. Maybe you can get one less on eBay trying to set this Loomis down so it doesn't slide. Perfect. 
So this is a discontinued laser uh, speed stick. Um, it's a pretty, it's a mag taper rod, which means you've got this real thin butt section. And even though it's not a high dollar rod, you can still see it has a real thin section here. I think these are not micro guides, not full. They're halfway, I don't know what they would call them, macro guides? I don't know. It's been a while since I brushed up on guides. But in essence here, um, what's really great about your open split grip type of a deal is number one, underhanded casting. Um, if you pitch, punch, flip, having this open is going to, your casting circumference is just opened up so greatly in terms of, let me swing by here, of all the, all the free motion that this lifts up. I think it's something that's really underrated. It's not really talked about much and it's huge. Um, to be able to do that, um, you can't do that with a full grip. As a matter of fact, I'll try to see if I can kind of showcase it in a way. Now this rod blank is gonna bounce because it's a crankbait rod, but you can't you can't flip the same way with this thing here. And the main thing when you're when you're talking about and, and it goes to a certain extent with cranks, um, your versatility, but I mean a crankbait, you're relying more on the action of the lure. Whereas your plastics and your jigs, you're trying to impart that action. Um, for m most situations, unless you're finesse like stitching or or, or uh, drop shot. So if you're trying to get their attention and you want to do different things, this really totally frees you up to do that. And that's your real big advantage with a split grip, especially if you're like my dad and you're older and you see this and you think, what the hell is it? Um, it, it does offer less weight on a rod overall. But the disclaimer that I want to note and reel manufacturers and rod manufacturers are, are keenly aware of this, is when these rods came out, they boasted the lighter weight. However, your first generation split grips tended to be very tip heavy. So you'd have a rod that would lean like this, and it's about balance and lightweight. Um, so in essence, you would have less sensitivity on a rod with lighter weight than if you had two or three more ounces maybe even three and a half ounces laying straight across this way. Um, a split grip rod like this is, is, a, is a touch more difficult to balance, but I mean, some of your $79 bait casters are weighing under seven and a half ounces, eight ounces now. And the same thing, particularly with the newer Daiwa reels, um, they are gonna be super light coming out, the new next generation of Daiwas. And the next generation, the Shimano, even if you're a Shimano, I'll even throw a Shimano pitch. Uh, even though I prefer Daiwa, the Hagen gearing, I think it's the Sedona saltwater approved big beefy drag. If you're if you like that $69 price point, that's a really good option. Again, super light on the spinning end, but that goes for spinning and casting the balance part. But on a casting rod, uh, to me, if you're if, if I'm casting out in that colder weather and I've got like I said, I'm layered up more and I'm casting, um, it it just kind of slides around more here. And, you know, I'm trying to focus on hitting those pinpoint targets. So I guess in essence, if you, if I was to go with one all year round for summertime fishing, spring, fall, I would probably have to recommend the split grip for year round because it's going to give you versatility that you can't get for your jigging and your worming. And, and that would be for your top water. So I'm going to go with this for the versatility pick and the lightweight because you can get them so inexpensive now that are light. I mean, these $80 split grip rods are just phenomenal now. I don't. I don't plug a lot of these higher dollar rods because guess what? I got that on a promotion. I didn't pay for this Loomis. So, but I am going to do a Loomis video later on and show you what a Loomis can do that let's say something like a Fenwick can. But in essence, um, that's your difference. And like I said, this first spring and fall seems to really do it for me, particularly on the, uh, the crankbait end. Um, so, but the choice is ultimately going to be up to you and there are more fuller grip offerings coming out. So that's just the tip of the day. The difference between split grip and crankbait and the way I break it down is versatility, split grip, um, casting accuracy, comfort, colder weather, full grip. So take care everybody and like I said, I'd like to do a Loomis video in the future. I've got a lot of ideas to pump out, but that's just the tip of the day. And uh, give me some feedback if you like this kind of stuff and please subscribe if you haven't. Um, but I'm really excited about getting more content out 
in the Chicago area, it's really warm, so there's still lots of bass fishing and there's still lots of weeds out. So we're not, it's kind of had summer come back before we've hit the fall yet. So take care, everyone, and please subscribe. Have a great day.